Hello there. You look familiar. Happy mid? Before I come to the subject of today's blog, allow me to put you in the mood first. According to Robin Mead of CNN Headline News, a woman nominated her grandson for the Liar of the Year contest. She claimed that a four-year-old could dirty his diapers and make everybody believe somebody else did. Do the Bushes have a grandson? Sure sounds like the Bush dynasty. <laughs> hey, less than two weeks until the fat lady sings and hopefully the curtain falls over the last eight years of trouble. Exciting, I tell you. I gotta get my old tuxedo pressed. Next. Every day I get a couple of emails offering me breast implants. To those who have a learning disability, I do not need breast implants. My boobs are just fine. What I need is something for my stretch marks. Finally, some of you have commented about my accent. I think it is time for me to come out of the closet. In order to preserve my heritage, I practice my chick magnet European killer accent every day for 34 minutes in front of the mirror. When I switch back from Spanish, Italian, German and French, everybody thinks I'm Irish. To which I can only say I am from Massachusetts. You see, this is the fundamental problem. You immediately recognize that I am pulling your leg. In turn, when it comes to politicians, you seem to believe anything they say. Take Bush singing supercalifragilis while twisting the Rubik's Cube until he thinks his legacy is spick and span. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. Oh, by the way, I have evidence that Bush is related to Mary Poppins by no more than two degrees of separation. And so we've had a pretty good economic run here in the country, six years of growth. We've had uh, 51 straight months of increased job employment. It's the largest, longest uh, period of uninterrupted job growth in the nation's history. Back to his legacy. He and his fellow brothers in mind actually claim that the current global economic crisis was caused by Clinton. Of course it was. In the alternative, it is caused by Obama, but in any case by liberals. Next, these guys are against any economic stimulus package and claim that cutting taxes was the reason for Bush's economic success. Am I missing something? If you think about where we were coming out of 2001 and where we are today, you can't help but say the plan worked. Cutting taxes helped stimulate economic growth. <laughs> Not quite, as the current state of the global economy and the unemployment rate shows. I have argued this for many years. While paying taxes is not the most favored thing we do, our taxes pay among other things for our security, education, etc. In other words, they go right back into the monetary flow, even though through somebody else's, for example the teacher's or cop's hands. I'll come to the national debt on another day. While I am at taxes, the FBI is in a hiring frenzy. Gee, I wonder whether they start working again, as in going after elected officials and corporate mobsters who pay them bribes? Or is that too much to ask for? By the way, right after the Legacy Project documentary currently in production, I have a documentary in preparation that will provide the evidence of massive, and I mean massive lawsuit fixing on an epidemic scale, with almost every senator and congressman involved. Looks like they are not going to like me anymore. Oh, remember, a few days ago we talked about torture. You're going to like this one here. This is Supreme Court Justice Scalia, a Republican on torture. Has anybody ever referred to torture as punishment? Not everything odious is against the Constitution, 
He said that in context with torture. Think I'm kidding? And we have a law against torture. But if the everything that is hateful and odious is not covered by some provision of the Constitution. How about the constitutional rights of the victim? Oh, I get it. Discussing that would unreasonably disclose state secrets. Do you slowly get the feeling that we need an overhaul from the ground up all the way to the top, as high as you can imagine? On a different subject. The Republicans heavily oppose the nomination of Eric Holder to the position of Attorney General. Alan Spector of Pennsylvania has three questions for Holder. First, Bill Clinton's pardon of fugitive commodities trader Mark Rich. Second, the decision by Holder's then boss, Attorney General Janet Reno, not to appoint a special prosecutor to look into Vice President Al Gore's 1996 fundraising activities. Look who's talking. This is coming from a senator who takes money from parties to litigation, quid pro quo for ex parte contacts to judges. <laughs> and third, the clemency granted by Bill Clinton to a group of Puerto Rican nationalists. By now you realize that neither decision was made by Holder. So, why are the Republicans so adamant to oppose him? Looks to me they fear that Holder may go after corruption, including the millions of dollars paid by corporate mobsters to senators and congressmen to interfere with pending litigation which by no means is restricted to one side of the aisle. Anyway, I need to go and practice my chick magnet accent. Take care. What would I do without you? Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious